This entitled mum will use other people's wheelchairs to push through crowds, and she doesn't care who she might hurt in the process. But her daughter decides she won't let her mum do it anymore. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. This started when a Ford F-150, owned by a company that worked both sides of the border but was only insured in Mexico, ran a red light by my high school without slowing down at over 40 miles per hour and continued at speed alongside the elementary school across the street. That was until they came to my intersection where they realized there was a problem and they hit the brakes. It was lucky that the driver threaded the needle between the second and third car during the protected turn part of the intersection cycle and and only hit me. I could have been under three cars worth of twisted metal instead of having taken an involuntary 15 foot flying lesson without a glider, followed immediately by bodyboarding without a board on pavement for another 20 or so feet. As bad as it went, I got off easy. My leg was broken straight across the femur at the height of the bumper and my two front teeth were shattered to the roots with one of the neighboring teeth having been chipped and some lost skin here and there. I was confined to a wheelchair for a long time and it hurt to move around. So mum, who is very controlling, narcissistic and entitled, halted her volunteer work to take care of a now even more disabled daughter. This happened 20 years ago, so there's a lot of fuzzy details, but I do remember during one of the regular checkups, the doctors said I could resume some normal activities and leave the house, to which I said I wanted to go back to school, even if for only one class. I missed my friends and wanted to get out and social. I was, figuratively, climbing up on the walls due to my inability to escape my mum, forcing me to watch any TV show that she wanted and sitcoms featuring her new agenda after my nana, accused of her not caring for me during the divorce. I suffered through weeks non-stop of men dumping the women they knocked up, teen mums being entitled and expecting their daughters and grandparents to support them while they raise the baby, stories of women being taken advantage of, dateline, you name it. A camp pain of men are evil and only want one thing, and women are helpless against them. Unable to escape, too young to know what I'm talking about, and drawing a lot of attention. I just wanted my life back and to spend time with my friends, so I counted the days between doctor visits and was as good a patient as I could be to try and keep my healing on track. The doctor said I could for a few hours, and I picked my favorite class, AP Biology, which is where I learned my blood type. Problem is, going to school in a wheelchair chair was a new challenge and mum had to push me since I didn't have the arm strength to make the quarter to half mile trek by myself. And that's when I noticed the problem. Well, the beginning of it, it got worse as time went on, as things often do with any EM. It was strange going by the intersection where the accident happened, but crossing a little two lane residential street was no problem. The problem was the four lane T intersection that ran in front of my high school, which had an additional turning lane. The the road was badly paved and drivers didn't honor the light as this was a relatively new thing. Mum ran me across and until we got over the hump in the middle of the street, it was fine. Once we were going downhill, she kept up the pace and I felt like I was going to be thrown out of the chair. I was also a bit amazed that she could still run with how much pain she claimed to be in because of her foot. I clung to the wheelchair like my life depended on it and said nothing. She never listened anyway. I didn't want to be denied any chance of escaping her for a few hours by seeming ungrateful about receiving help. The next day was just as hair raising and I held my breath as I clung to metal and plastic. On the third day, I asked mum to please not go so fast because it made me feel unsafe. On the fourth day, I nearly lost my new glasses if it weren't for the little neck strap that lets them hang from your neck. This time I told her not to go so fast since being polite and explaining why I'm asking clearly isn't good enough. The drivers have no respect for anyone or anything. If you're going to get to your class, we need to cross quickly. So until you can push yourself about, you're going to have to accept it. Don't want to be back in hospital again now, do we? This goes on for a week while I struggle around the house to build up strength. And on the second week of my return to class, a few things happened. 
I had been gaining strength and had some mobility around the house. I wanted to get my independence back from mum, who delighted in toddling me around whenever she went while dad was at work, on base doing whatever you do when enlisted. I was tired of the dread whenever we were out crossing any street. I was afraid of what she might do if she got frustrated at others, with me essentially confined to a sitting position and wholly dependent on her. Before I regained independent mobility, things escalated a bit. A jacket I kept in my lap got bounced into the crosswalk due to being run across the street and several cars run it over before the lights turned so she could fetch it, which she only did under great protest. Had to throw the hoodie out, but she used it as proof that she might have every right to make me feel unsafe just across the street. Another time, my injured leg, which was in a brace, got jostled out of its support and I slammed the brake for one wheel so I could put my leg back in place. I got admonished for using my brakes while crossing a street and not being more careful with my hurt leg. We were running across trolley tracks, so I'm still not sure what I could have done differently in the situation. I had enough, and the day after, I waited for mum to run me across the street without any regard for how unsafe her method made me feel. As we passed over the high point of the street, I put my hands on the brake levers and slightly applied them to scrape against the wheels without forcing a full stop so that mum would have to slow down after asking once again for her not to go so fast. Not after everything that had already happened these last weeks that made me feel uncomfortable and unsafe. Stop that! She didn't slow down and went faster in the short time I'd eased up, so I applied the brakes again to enforce a speed I felt safer with. I feel her hit the back of my head and the chair and we crossed that day no later than usual and without unnecessary pain on my part. Can't say the same for her. She was delaying an unnecessary surgery because she'd have to be driven around by friends for no less than three months, but that's a tale for another time. This repeats for three more days before she's had enough of me enforcing my desire not to be thrown from the wheelchair with the use of tactical brakes. You don't seem to be taking this situation seriously, and you think you have every right to use those brakes. You're getting yourself to school from here on without any help. She huffed and puffed and played the poor suffering mother with a bad foot with an ungrateful daughter on the phone that day to a few remaining friends after her first round of a dress book purge. I was expecting this. Whenever someone challenged her or asked her not to do a thing for any reason, she threw this fit and redacted any or all benefit the recipient got from the arrangement. She had refused to let me try to push myself at all between home and school, so the only way I was going to get the chance was to frustrate her to the point she allowed me to prove that I could. It was hard pushing myself, but every time she started to act sweet about how hard it must be to push myself and that it would be faster if I let her help, I found I had a little more strength. I got blistered and calluses, my arms felt like limp noodles and ached in that good way of building muscle strength and I got to class late for a while. She followed me though, so she did care in that strange manner of horrible parents who love nothing more than to give their kids lifelong trauma that requires thousands of dollars of therapy, just in case. No driver ran me over, but after the hump of the street by my school, I felt my chair dip as I coasted to the sidewalk. Mum had put her feet in the back bar of the chair and was holding onto the handlebars so she didn't have to walk the distance herself all the while she smiled and waved to the drivers. She took to doing this every day and I learned how to turn corners using the brakes so the increased speed from added weight didn't faze me much but it was another case of not knowing how to react. I'd like to say incidents that casually scared me only happened near the house but she did it at a wholesale store at an amusement park. It was worse in crowded places like the amusement park, the beach, a theatre or the grocery store on a Sunday. As soon as it was that weird middle ground of being able to use crutches to get around but still needing a wheelchair for long distances, she started to change what she was doing with me in public. My healing had progressed to where I'd regained range of motion in my knee so my leg wasn't stuck in front of me like a sore thumb but could rest comfortably in a sitting position which initially I was pretty happy about. I thought the first few times it was an accident but when mum was in control I was running into people's calves more often, making people yelp and turn to see what hit them. I was being pushed and shoved through crowds like it was the Fast and Furious franchise. I was a means to an end, a way to cut lines and make people move since mum's foot was messed up. I resented every
every moment she was behind me in a wheelchair because I got the dirty looks. Not her, even though she was pushing. Once I had graduated to only needing a cane to get around, I swore I wouldn't let anyone else I know ever experience mum in control of their wheelchair, if it ever happened. A year later, my family was going to an amusement park, the one with the dancing old guy commercial, and I'd invited my bestie Bubbles, who I regret had to have a part in this tale. While at this park, she twisted her ankle, and mum, dad and I were in agreement to take her back home. A four hour drive with traffic, Bubbles insisted she had only twisted her ankle, and didn't want to leave as the trip was planned out for a long weekend, and she got hurt on the last day. We had to rent a park wheelchair, and I felt the old dread waking from its slumber. I'll admit, I kinda hovered out of concern for her, and out of fear for what mum might do. I didn't care if I had to use a cane for myself, I had a mission. I did my very best to make sure I was the one to push Bubbles around, and if not me, then only to let mum do it on flat stretches of the park, where her aggression would not be triggered. The only snag was one of those round boat rides that holds 12 people per boat, as the ride was barely wheelchair accessible, and we both wanted to give it a go. As we get to the end of the day, the crowds of people leaving was thicker than pea soup, and I was hanging on to the handlebars of the rented wheelchair with a white knuckled grip. Bubbles was tired and in moderate pain, but progress was slow. Mum was limping with her hurt foot, and I had a sinking feeling that something was about to happen. Something about that look on mum's face put me on edge. Move over, you're too slow. I got an elbow to the ribs, yanked bubbles around as mum pried my hands free of the handlebars, and I had the happy bonus of my entitled brother, Donald, telling me not to push. I could only watch as mum shoved the wheelchair forward into the calves and ankles of the people in front of us, and all she got was some dirty looks and people trying to get out of her way because those footrests hurt a heck ton if you don't get the right footwear. Bubbles turned in the chair, and there I was beside her. Another turn and she sees who's in control of her fate. We're trapped in a packed crowd with a wheelchair pushed by an aggressive Karen. Mum was in control of where and how fast Bubbles Bubbles went. I couldn't tell who felt worse, her or me. Bubbles looked scared and I was miserable because I was incapable of helping her. I knew what mum was capable of, but I still wasn't prepared. By now we had a gap in front of us, thanks to the aggressive wheelchair handling, and a young kid stepped into the empty area while holding onto a parent's hand. Mum didn't like this and leaned over Bubbles, as she had in the past with me, and shoved the child into their parents parents' legs while thrusting forward several feet to keep the kid from doing that again. To me, it looked like mum backhanded this kid, but Bubbles insist it was just a rough shove. I told her over the phone about the unfair punishments, the lies, narcissism, and entitlement. It must have sounded like your usual teen garbage about hating your parents, but there it was. I think I tried to get control of the wheelchair back, but mum was resolute in treating the wheelchair and its occupant like a battering ram to get herself off her feet and to the car faster. Bubbles and I were both appalled and we could only suffer through the bad behavior, dirty looks, curses, until we were at the rental office to wait and return the wheelchair. Without it, Bubbles couldn't walk all the way to the car and I insisted that I sit alone with her while the rest of the family helped mum. It was a cold night outside the front gate with a park employee nearby to take the rental back inside the gate to prevent theft. I'm sorry Bubbles, Really, I knew mum would have done something like that, but she never went that far. She did that kind of thing before I was in the wheelchair for a time. It's why I tried so hard to be there for you and push you around. I didn't want you to feel unsafe or scared, just because you have to be in a wheelchair with your ankles swollen like that. She stayed silent. I was impotently mad at mum for not having the sense to restrain herself for one holiday weekend out of a year in front of my longtime best friend. Four days out of the year to behave like the perfect parent, she pretended to be the same in public as she had for the hours I attended events at the blind rec center. I didn't care if mum was in pain because of her own stupid decisions. She was an adult and she knew better, as she put it, but even I knew better than to do anything that she had done in the last half hour. Okay, well this woman obviously sounds like a terrible person. Seems like she uses her hurt foot as her excuse to be the victim at all times. That is, assuming that it actually is still hurt, and she's not just faking. But not 
not only that, but then to use other people's hurt and disabilities to trample on people in public, it's just beyond belief. It's not too uncommon to accidentally be bumped into somebody in a wheelchair, but I've never once thought maybe the person behind the wheelchair intentionally bumped into me. The bright side though is that at least the daughter can see through what her mother is, and she's made the decision for herself that she never wants to become that, and that's good news. I hope they recovered quickly and are doing well now. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.